Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this brand new motherboard from MSI. This is the MSI Z87 G43. Starting off with a closer look at the box, this is a Z87 motherboard, so that's referring to the chipset. It is also a Socket 1150 motherboard, so it is designed for Intel's fourth generation core processors, uh, also known as codename Haswell. So bear in mind, you will need one of those processors. It's not backwards compatible with the 1155 socket. Uh, you get some pretty nice features with this one, such as the ability to do three display outputs uh, using the iGPU from your processor. You also get PCI Express Gen 3 compatibility, a uh, graphical click BIOS, you can use your mouse in it to click things. Uh, also you get RAID functionality again via the Z87 chipset. Uh, this is a military class 4 motherboard so you get uh, essential protections such as protection against humidity, high temperature, uh, electromagnetic interference and electrostatic discharge. Flipping around to the back we have some more information about the contents of the box. They're using uh, high quality military, military class components. So you have uh, super ferrite chokes. You also have solid capacitors uh, with extremely long lifespan. So compared to uh, non super ferrite chokes and non solid capacitors, you're going to get longer lifespan for that. Uh, a little bit more information about the military class essentials and protections over there on the right. Uh, some detailed specifications right there. They should be available on the product page as well, but if you want to take a closer look, there it is, as well as the layout of the I.O. We also get some features from MSI, such as the OC Genie 4, starting over here on the left, and this is the ability to uh, use a single button located on the motherboard to automatically overclock and supercharge your speed experience. Uh, you also get the command center, and this is going to allow you to do uh, BIOS or UEFI controls as well as overclocking from within the operating system environments. Uh, you actually do get 4K ultra high definition support uh, also by way of the included uh, outputs. We already mentioned three display outputs but uh, you can actually do three monitors from the same uh, again from your iGPU I should say. PCI Express Gen 3 gives you much uh, better bandwidth uh, than PCI Express Gen 2, effectively double the bandwidth, uh, and then some more info about the Click BIOS and Super RAID. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. Taking a look inside the box, we have the motherboard itself, of course, and we'll be finishing up with a detailed look at that. Also, we have some accessories, so a couple items there, as well as some documentation. Here's your driver and utilities disk. Chances are there will be updated versions of these drivers available from the MSI website, so it's always best to go there to check. Uh, you also get a quick installation guide right there, uh, which is kind of a generic installation guide. You can also check out how to build a, com a computer video on Newegg TV. And then your user's guide for, uh, this is actually covering several different ch version chipsets different chipset versions of this motherboard. This is going to tell you important information such as a listing of all the components that are included and a layout of the motherboard itself telling you what's what. Or you could just continue to watch this video because I will also be telling you that. Uh, you also have a couple serial ATA cables here. These are going to be SATA revision 1, 2, or 3 compatible. They all have the little clasps on the end to hold them in place. And they both have uh, a 90 degree angled plug on one end and a straight plug on the other. You also get an input-output shield right there, so it is black in the background, and you got some text to indicate which plug is which. And here's a look at the Z87G43 motherboard itself. As you can see, MSI has gone with a blue and black color scheme for this. Uh, you also have a bit of brown in the motherboard PCB itself. Let me flip around to the back here for just a moment so you guys can get a closer look at that. So we have a brown PCB, and you'll also note that uh, most of the heat sinks on the board are actually attached with Phillips head screws, so you can remove them if you ever did need to in the future. Going back to the front of the board, I wanted to point out the fan headers. You do get a total of five, and they're all four-pin PWM capable. So you get a couple CPU fan headers at the top, one right here and one right here. You also get another system fan header right here above the PCI Express area, and then two more system fan headers on the lower right over here, as well as at the bottom center. Now we're going to take a close-up look at the board, and I will do my very best to go over just about every component on here, that, at least the ones that I recognize, of course. Uh, so we're going to, oops, sorry, let me angle that just a bit for you guys. All right, so starting off down here, we have these uh, FP1 and FP2. Those are your front panel headers, so uh, you want to connect your front panel leads from your computer case to that. Uh, you also have some USB headers right here, so uh, USB and a USB uh, system fan header that uh, was previously mentioned at the beginning, a COM header as well, 
Uh, you actually have a LPT, so you get a printer header. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's sort of an older standard for connecting printers. So uh, if you do happen to have an older printer with that kind of connection, you can route a cable. Uh, typically, you can get a rear panel uh, a PCI bracket for that and give yourself that port actually as well. Uh, also, a trusted platform module header if you're uh, in need of one of those, and audio header in the lower left for your HD audio. Uh, speaking of audio on this board, you have the Realtek ALC892 codec. You can see the chip for that, which is right there. Audio components are on the lower left right here. And uh, next up, we have our PCI Express, and I should say as well as PCI area, because you do have a few PCI uh, ports as well. So uh, for PCI Express, you have two full-length X16 slots right there. You also get a couple X1 slots uh, at the top and the third slot. And then you also have some legacy PCI slots, uh, one, two, and three of them right there, the black ones that are larger. So if you have some older PCI devices, you can still connect those. Uh, if you are going to be going with uh, a discrete graphics card in this board, you'll definitely want to connect it to the top slot right there. Uh, you do have multi-GPU support in, by way of two-way AMD Crossfire X technology, so you can do a two-way Crossfire X configuration with this motherboard. Uh, and then you also have, uh, again, your PCIe, which is going to run X16 here and then X8 right here. Uh, bear in mind, if you're going to be plugging in both of these, you're going to get uh, X8 and X8 on both of those. Now, uh, I also wanted to point out, moving over to the right, you have a nice MSI logoed heatsink on your Z87 chipset. And then to the right of that, you have uh, one of the main things that the chipset's controlling. So a couple serial ATA ports right there. These are all going to be SATA revision 3, 6 gigabits per second capable. And then you got four more, which are side facing right there. These are also going to give you your RAID functionality by way of the PCH in the Z87 chipset. And you do have support for RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. Moving along up the side of the board, uh, there's the other fan header that I already mentioned. Let me make sure that the board isn't falling over. Okay. Uh, above that, you have a blue port right there, and that's a USB front panel header. So if you have a 20-pin uh, USB 3.0 connector from your case, you can plug it in right there. Above that, you have your 24-pin main motherboard power connector. Uh, and then from there, we'll move on to the DDR3 area. Uh, you might also note that you got the CPU fan headers, which are right up here at the top. Uh, for DDR3, uh, you have DDR3 compatibility, of course. It is dual channel, so you're going to want to make sure you purchase your DDR3 in identical sets of two. Uh, I recommend an ident identical set of four if you are going to go uh, and populate all four DIMM slots. But again, uh, you'd populate uh, either both of the blacks or both of the blues together to give yourself dual channel capability. Uh, and you have DIMM support for up to eight gigs per DIMM. That gives you up to 32 gigs total that you could install if you're going to populate all four slots. Uh, official Intel support for memory speeds up to 1600. And then if you are going to be overclocking, you can actually go all the way up to 3000. Uh, bear in mind that's going to be heavily dependent on the actual memory controller in your processor because they do vary from processor to processor. Not all of them are capable of reaching those highest of the high end um, overclocking speeds. Also, finding a DDR3-3000 kit is, is a bit hard to do right now, but you can still get um, really good uh, memory performance by going with overclock speeds such as 1866 or 2133, 2200, that sort of thing. Uh, to the left of that, you have the CPU socket itself. And again, I must remind you folks that this is a socket 1150 socket, and uh, it is not compatible with socket 1155 processors. So. Uh, the second and third gen Intel Core processors, uh, aka Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge, were on socket 1155. Those are not compatible with this socket. You will need a new fourth gen Intel Core processor. Uh, so, yeah, bear that in mind. You don't have any compatibility between those. Uh, the socket itself is essentially the same, and the mounting system right here, as far as the spacing goes, is also the same. So, if you do have an older CPU cooler, you can still install it right here and still make use of that if you have a favorite cooler that you like to use. Uh, also, above and to the left of the CPU socket itself, you'll notice uh, the power delivery components. Here you can see some of those uh, super ferrite jokes. And uh, also, of course, we have some nice, uh, decent size uh, heat sinks over your power delivery components, uh, your VRMs, and that's going to help keep those cooler. So if you are going to be going for an overclock, uh, that should help keep things more stable. Uh, lastly, for the front of the board, we have the 8-pin uh, supplemental CPU power connector. So definitely make sure you plug that in from your power supply. That will give your CPU the juice it needs in order to run smoothly. Uh, finally, we have our inputs and outputs over here on the uh, top left of the board. 
You get a PS2 connector right there, so that's a combo. You can use it for a mouse or a keyboard. Uh, you also have some USB 2.0, a couple, uh, I should say, two, four, six of those right there in the black ports. Your video outs, you get uh, HDMI, you also get dual link DVI as well as VGA. And again, if you do connect up all three of those and you're making use of the iGPU in your processor, you can actually do triple display, which is one of the new features uh, for the new Intel HD graphics. Uh, you also have your integrated network interface card, so uh, that's a real, I'm sorry, that's a, yes, it is Realtek. Realtek 8111E gigabit uh, Ethernet connector right there, RJ45. Couple more USB 3.0 ports, and then finally your analog uh, audio outs as well as microphone input for your Realtek ALC 892 chip. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been our close up look at the new MSI Z87 G43 motherboard featuring the Z87 chipset as well as the 1150 socket for Intel's new fourth generation core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed this video, well, you should hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Newegg TV YouTube channel. We'll see you all in the next video.